Uh, City Life poster. Uh, this is a poster representing uh, the student's work. It's a culmination of all the work that she did during the semester. Uh, and I think the things that I value about it starting off is that it does represent, has nice graphics, and it, it represents uh, the work that she did. Um, I, I, yeah, I would agree. I think that um, it, this particular project was very ambitious. And so uh, one of the things that she mentions in here several times is how many different things she had to learn in order to complete the project. And so it does at least uh, mention the ambition that went into the, uh, the original project. Okay. In terms of the things that I think might be able to be improved quite a bit is that uh, this represents a lot of the work that she had done in her proposal. So a lot of this was basically cut and paste from there. Um, there's difference in terms of the layout. The, the actual images could have been better used in terms of actually supporting the text uh, as opposed to being simply gathered together here in the middle. It, it doesn't really give the person who's viewing this a sense of how all these things relate to the text in terms of uh, gameplay or implementation of those kind of things. Yeah, also, uh, well, she does mention all the different technologies that she used in order to complete the project. I think that she kind of sells the work short. It's the smallest part of the text, um, the part that talks about the implementation, uh, where she just mentions the names of the various technologies. And as I said before, this is the most ambitious, one of the most ambitious of the projects. Um, and it has the smallest section in here to describe um, what was necessary in order to complete the project. There was also an awful lot of uh, repetition in the text, and, and I suspect that one of the reasons why um, the text was given a sort of a second uh, um, category to the project was that it was the end of the semester, and there was a lot of work that had to get done in order to make it for the poster session. And so the poster itself, the presentation of the work, took a back seat to completing the work itself. All right, All right well, um, this uh, poster, uh, I think, um, kind of demonstrates what I would consider to be one of the purposes of these posters, which is to not just serve as, uh, uh, as a, a writing uh, instrument, but also to, to present uh, the material. I mean, this, was, this is a very polished poster. The student that completed this poster uh, went through the trouble of having uh, design professors do a critique of the poster before finishing it. And so uh, cared very deeply. It, the student is uh, completing a major in both design and computer science. We cared very deeply about um, what it looked like. Uh, the nice thing is that it, while, while it looks nice, it also does do a really good job of, of expanding on all the different technologies that were necessary in order to complete the project. So uh, this uh, poster, I think, does an excellent job of flowing from the beginning of the project through what it took to complete it and ending with uh, the final product. And I think this one has a good sense of audience. Uh, in other words, he's attentive to the fact that the audience needs to follow through. Uh, as was mentioned, um, he does a nice job of layout in terms of using headings, white space, uh, also putting in the various different uh, graphics which very nicely complement the, the text. So I think that's, that's, that's important because the poster is, is again, as an opportunity for someone to read it or someone to actually use it to support a discussion in terms of presenting those to, to the person who's coming up and reading about those things. Uh, the only thing I, I would wish that he had done here uh, in addition to what he's already done is possibly put in some captions to explain what these uh, images are, are all about. Mm -hmm. uh, and there was one other thing I think he needed to be attentive to explaining some of the acronyms right. uh, that may have been used in here. Uh, other than that, I think uh, this was a very nice project and it did an excellent job, uh, particularly in terms of the layout, but also in terms of the text to explain what he was actually doing. Uh, this project actually shares a lot of the background technology, the previous project we just talked about. Um, many of the things that you'll see in the text here are repeated um, uh, from the text that was in uh, the previous uh, poster because the, these two students actually completed a project that had a lot of the similar technologies on the back end. Um, what I think is interesting is uh, to con contrast this particular poster with the previous one. The previous poster um, had a lot of design elements in it and paid careful attention to design. Uh, I, I believe the student also paid very careful attention to design, but approached the design of this poster as something um, secondary to the technology. I mean, this, was, this is much more of what a computer scientist would produce uh, and not one that was trained in design. And so um, I think that it, it shows the same kind of flow that the previous uh, poster does. It starts with a good introduction. Um, and it also gives you a, a taste of what to expect at the end, which is something that I, I, I like. I like to, you know, tell somebody something, explain it, and then tell, tell them at the end what you told them. 
Um, so it's bookmarked nicely. Um, I, I like the images um, that are, are, are placed in here. Uh, and so, yeah, I think that this was a, another nice poster. Yeah, I think my, I, I agree. Uh, and I think this works out very well and is very comparable to the previous poster because in the, the projects are very similar. Uh, but again, the, pro, the approach is, is kind of different. Whereas the previous poster uh, was done by someone who has critiquing from someone from a graphic design standpoint, this one doesn't. Uh, and there's a lot more intuitivity as to this one in terms of the actual layout. Uh, there are things that certainly could be improved, but also he highlights things. So there's also format issues here that I think are, are nice. One thing I, I, I wish that he had done uh, was when he talked about API here, I got a little confused about whether he's talking about APIs in general or the API for this particular project, which was, was the uh, uh, virtual pet. He was actually talking about the latter, the virtual pet. So mm -hmm. I think attended to the audience, again, would be, be beneficial here in terms of the things he did. But as far as the actual text is concerned, I think he did a marvelous job of making sure he, that he took and he took the large project that he did and compressed it in a way where it was readable and usable in terms of having someone walk up to it and understand what he's doing by simply reading it or being able to support his presentation as somebody asked him questions. I guess my closing comment would be that I think he also did a pretty good job of explaining the importance of the parts of his project, why yes. people should care about the things that he was working on. And one last thing that uh, was not mentioned but you mentioned earlier, which I think is really kind of cool, is that this is extremely geeky. Uh, he put all the really cool things on here, and as computer scientists, this is... this. Lots of shiny things in this. <laughs> right. Room. This pleases us very there's much. A, there's a QR code in the corner. I mean, what, what's, yes. what's better than that? I mean... Yeah, well, one of the things that we really want our students to understand when they complete these projects is that we want them to understand the synthesis of information um, across the curriculum in computer science. Uh, and so one of the nice things about this poster is that um, um, mostly implicitly but occasionally explicitly the student um, is, is uh, talking about synthesis of material from other courses in the CS curriculum and other courses uh, in other uh, disciplines here on campus. Um, the thing that I like the most about projects like this is the relationship to some extent between computer science and philosophy where in effect when we're designing computers we have to assign meaning to things that are arbitrary yeah. to some extent. Um, and so you can see here at the beginning of the project um, there's a discussion about designing um, an, inf an instruction set architecture. In other words, uh, designing how much information is passed around by the computer and what each part of that, of that information means. Um, and so, um, essentially, working from first principles, given the amount of space that the student has determined uh, is necessary to store all the, all the information, you can build, uh, in building blocks, you can build up uh, the required set of instructions uh, for the machine and then begin implementing uh, simulations and then later the actual hardware. And what's really good about this is the thinking that goes on here involves basically making trade-offs. Uh, he's got to decide how big the word is going to be. Uh, and as I pointed out, it usually is in terms of powers of two. And he goes in and uses eight and he uses 16 as two powers of two and settles on something in between because he's made very clear choices and expresses that here. Then he defines the language, the interpretation that was mentioned before mm -hmm. in terms of what are those bit strings going to be. And also he has, he's operating the constraints of not only space but also in terms of what he needs to make a complete language to make sure this can do all the things that he needs it to do. Moving from there, he moves, he has several smaller components here that he's using. He chose uh, out of a number of them that he actually presented in his you know, um, lead up to this. He, there were several of these, including the ALU, the, or the uh, arithmetic logic unit that he has here that are actually abstracted away here. So this block here is represented by this small block down here. He could have put several of those. So he had to make a conscious decision about which one he was going to put here to represent that levels of abstraction. And he goes one more level over here where he actually has to deal with a layout and a different set of constraints. The constraints here are basically distance. He's moving to a physical environment, a physical uh, device where lengths of wires and juxtaposition of the various components makes a big deal. So he's learned a lot going from first principles, mm -hmm. as was mentioned before, flowing through, dealing with constraints all the time, dealing with different levels of abstraction. This shows that synthesis that was presented earlier, which brings together all the things that he's learned throughout his curriculum, not only computer science, but also at the university. Yeah, I think this, the flow of this poster, um, things uh, are presented as necessary results of the previous thing. And what distinguishes this poster from, uh, I would say, a considerably smaller project is everything in this first part right here. In other words, rather than being given this information and then asked to simulate it himself, uh, the student came up with the information and then proceeded to do the simulation. So I would, I would argue that this first column is what distinguishes this project.